Hello everyone and welcome back. This video is going to be a code along that should culminate in your assignment. Basically, if you follow along and do what I do, you'll get 100% because you will have it completed by the time this video is over with. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be redoing our pictures site that we made earlier this week, except we're going to be using Flexbox to make it more responsive. Right now, if I make this bigger, the pictures get bigger. If I make it smaller, the pictures get smaller. That's not what I want. What I want is for I want it to I want these pictures to be tiled like that, but if it gets bigger, I want more on that first row. And if it gets smaller, I want less on that first row. So they just, they start piling up. And we're gonna use Flexbox to do this. So this is the old website. You'll notice as, as I mentioned, it gets smaller, it gets bigger. What we want is this. But images stay the same, and then bam, they jump to two per row, then bam, they jump to one per row. An added benefit of this is that you'll see that they're all the same size. They're all scaled down automatically. While on this one, you'll see this one is smaller than those, this one is bigger than those, so it looks a little wonky, looks a little, this one's bigger, looks a little bit off. But on here, they're all the exact same height and width. So I have a HTML document and a CSS document created. I've got it loaded up here right here, nothing's there. So let's go ahead and do our boilerplate. Call this pictures v2.0. And in the body, we're just going to put h1, this is pictures. Let's refresh, make sure it works. Yep, it works. So, step one is going to be to add our images. So, in the exact same image file from last time, we copy. I'm going to paste them all in here. And again, as I said, I'm going to use that little atom trick to have multiple cursors. Image source equals, go to the end. I need the alt text. Alt equals, and again, in a real website, I would put actual alt text. For this one, a cool picture. So I insert an image tags for all of this. When I refresh this, I should get a bunch of images. Yep, but these are massive. We don't want this. These are also not responsive. If we make this smaller, it just cuts the image off, and that's a very bad user experience. So the first thing we have to do is actually link to our CSS sheet. So link, the name is Flexbox Image Gallery CSS. Oops, B O X. Then let's just make everything red to test. Make the border 2px solid red and make sure that it actually linked correctly. Yep, I got borders on everything, so I know this works. So first step, remember if you're using Flexbox, you have to have a container around your items. So I'm gonna add a div and give it the class of container. And again, this this name container is just, just made up, it's just a convention. You can name it anything you want. You can call it Flexbox container, you can call it parent box, or you can call it whatever you want. What matters is that the name container is the exact same that you use in your CSS. So we have to add display flex to our container. This turns it into a flex box. So container and all the items inside of it are now flex items. If we save, let's look at our, okay, see what it does. You'll notice, oh goodness, bad things are happening. Oh my, we're breaking it. Oh, good Lord in heaven. So it just stuck all the items on one row because if you remember by default, wrap is set to no wrap, but we want it to wrap. Oh, flex wrap. Is it flex wrap? There we go, flex wrap is wrap. So you refresh and now they're all on their own line. But we still have the problem of them being so big. So to fix that, we're just gonna select all images on this and give them a min width and a max width. So min width, I'm just gonna guesstimate about 20 REM if I remember correctly. And remember REM are relative units based on the screen size. And do a max width of 30. I'm just throwing numbers out, let's see what it looks like. Refresh, that looks pretty good. I like that. Um, maybe a little bit larger, maybe 35. That, nope, that pushes it down, so let's do 33, maybe. It's kind of cool. I like 33. And as I go over, it'll jump down and jump down. 
So this is all right. It's not the prettiest thing because we've got extra space over here that we don't have over here. Our pictures are butted up right next to each other. Um, so we're gonna add a little bit more to make it a little bit prettier. Um, first thing I want to do is to put some a little bit of space around each of these pictures. So each image, we're gonna give it a margin. Um, we don't want a margin top. Let's do one on the left, three on the bottom, and then one more on the right. This way, the reason I didn't want to do a top is I don't want to push it down, but I do want to put it between. So when we refresh this, now we've got it. But that margin was enough that it bumped it down to two lines. So maybe we do stick with 30. All right, and I, again, I'm just playing with this, this to see. That looks a lot better. I like that. So next step is going to be to get this white space evenly distributed. To do that, if you remember from your docs, you come in and you um, justify content. And then we're going to do, let's try space around and see what that looks like, because that's the one I generally use. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Space around, and it kind of pops them down. That's pretty cool. We have other options. We can do space between, see what that looks like, see if we like it. Um, that pushes them farther to the edge. That's that's okay. No, that's not. See, I don't like that. See, it's okay. It looks okay with three, but when I drop down to the two, that looks bad. I don't care for that. So we're going to do space around. One thing you'll note, as we increase and decrease the pictures, will change in size. See how they're a little bit taller, a little bit shorter there, and a little bit even shorter there. That's because these are all um, different aspect ratio images, so it takes the one that is the tallest and applies that to the rest. So this one right here is the tallest. So as it gets smaller, you can see this one's wider and but shorter. So that's just something to keep in mind when you get your images. So the next step is to make this look more like the other one. So we're just going to select our H1. Um, give it a bit of a margin on the left because right now it's too far to the left. Margin, I want to say it's about 2 REM because our image, let's see. Yep, that looks good. And then we're going to give it a border. Two pixels solid. And then I had the, let's see, I want to say this is the blue hmm, Let's see. I'll end that color. Refresh. That's real dark. Don't care for that. Um, what if we do? I don't know. One one four five. A A. Refresh. That's kind of cool. That's a that's more of a blue. I like that. That's good enough. Um. So the only thing really left is to make this not that ugly default font. I went ahead and found the link. Let's see, where am I? Went ahead and got the link from Google Fonts from the previous from the previous video, and it's just right there. And I suggest you do the same thing. If not, you can watch the video on how to add Google Fonts. It's very, very simple. And the name of that font is Tradewinds. So font family. Trade wins, and then if they don't have trade wins or can't download it, we'll get sans serif. So let's refresh. There we go. So now we have this nice website that works well, and it keeps the pictures from shrinking down too small, and it keeps them tiled, makes them happy. It's it's I think it's really cool that it centers the last one if there is a if there's a leftover. So we've got nine total pictures. When we drop down to two, we have eight and then one, or drop down to one. They're all centered like that. So that's one way that Flexbox can make your life easier and make your websites look even better, is to make them responsive in that way. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.